morning Year 7s, I'm Miss Dawson and today we're going to go through what science is like here at Co-op Academy. We're going to have a go at a sample lesson and we're going to hopefully learn some new stuff together. So, science at Co-op Academy is slightly different to science back at your primary schools. So, science at your primary schools would have been different because it would have been done in a classroom, whereas here at Co-op Academy we have loads of beautiful labs. Now, even though you're in laboratories, you do need to follow a few slightly different rules than what you'd have learnt and followed at primary school so that you stay safe. A few of those rules include things like don't run it in a lab and don't touch things before teachers tell you because some of the stuff in a lab is slightly more dangerous than what you would have in a normal classroom. So it's really important to follow those rules but don't worry, we will teach you them all when you come in September. So today we're going to do a lesson on atoms and we're going to learn by the end of the lesson what an atom is how to draw it and how to describe the structure of it, okay? And there's three key words that we need to learn by the end of the lesson. They are atom, proton and neutron. But don't worry, we're going to go through what they are in a minute. Okay, now there's just one rule that you might need to know before we start. Now in my classes, I always get my students to write down anything on the board that is in red. So you've got a beautiful set of notes to revise from and it will really help you with the second part of today's lesson where you're going to have a go at an activity using that information. So first of all, what is an atom? Atom comes from the Greek word atomos, meaning indivisible. Now indivisible, what does that mean? Indivisible means it cannot be divided or split up at all anymore. So that means an atom is the smallest part of any substance which still has its chemical properties. And that's really important, it's still got to act as that chemical, whatever it may be. So atoms are all around us, they're inside of me, they make up you, they're part of my hair, they're part of the floor, they're part of the air, they're part of your ceiling, they're part of absolutely everything around us. They're just made up of lots of different types. For example, we've got gold atoms, iron atoms, and magnesium atoms, lots and lots of different types. So, these atoms that we have are made up of three, what we call subatomic particles. And we're going to have a look a little bit more about what this word subatomic means. It's made up of two parts. The first part is sub, and the second part is atomic. Now you might not have heard of sub before. Sub means under or below, and I believe it comes from um, Latin or Greek. And atomic sounds a little bit like one of the words that we've already done. Can you think of what that word might be? Atoms. Okay, it's a little bit like the word atoms, and that's what it means, atomic atoms. So, subatomic means under or below an atom, and we say it means it is smaller than an atom. So, atoms are made up of three kinds of subatomic, smaller than an atom, particles, and we're going to go through what those three parts are now. So, an atom looks like this. This is a model of what our atoms look like. It's got lots of different parts, but the three subatomic parts that you need to know are protons, neutrons and electrons. That was protons, neutrons and electrons. Now they're found in different parts of the atom. The first, protons and neutrons, are found in what we call the nucleus. And our second, our electrons, whiz all the way around the outside all the way in what we call our shells. So that was our protons and neutrons in our nucleus and our electrons in our shells. Then the whole thing is called an atom. Now, in science we use lots of models to show what things look like and how things work and concepts. And in this case we use no model to show what our atoms look like because it's so small, actually we can't see it. But there's one problem with this model. What would you say is the biggest part of the model? Would you say it's the nucleus or maybe the shells? Well in fact, a nucleus is really really small compared to the overall atom. Really an atom is mainly made up of lots of space which is quite confusing when things are solid but it really is just made up of lots and lots of space and this model makes it a little bit confusing for that reason. So. It's down and over to you now. What we would like you to do 
is we would like you to create a model of an atom using any household um, resources that you have, whether that's an egg box, whether that's a milk carton, whether that's just colouring it in and making a beautiful drawing of an atom. We want you to be as creative as you can be. And once you have done and made this model for us, we'd like you to send a picture to me, Miss C. Dawson, at this email address, C. Dawson at cast.coop, that was C. Dawson at cast.coop, before the 1st of September to enter our competition. Now some of you might tell me that's a little bit too easy. So we've got a bit of a challenge for those of you who want to push yourselves. We would like you to make us an atom of something called lithium. Now we're not going to tell you what lithium is, you're going to have to go away and research that yourself. But if you want that little bit of challenge, there it is. We would like the model of the atom, lithium. Okay, so over to the next part of the lesson then. This is my mini quiz. So, without looking at your notes, I'd like you to put the subtitle, mini quiz, one to six in your books. And I would like you to have a go at labelling this atom. Now, you may want to pause the video here so you can have a go at it before we run the answer, through the answers. Okay then, so you should have had number one, nucleus. Number two, electron. Number three, proton or neutron. Number four, proton or neutron. Number five, atom. And number six, shells. Okay, so if you've got zero to two, we've got a bit of support that I'm going to go through in a minute with you to help you with the task. If you've got three to four, you're going to just do the main task for me, which I'm going to explain in a second. And if you've got five or six, we've got a little bit extra challenge to help me stretch you that little bit further and make it a little bit more difficult. Now recently, a local newspaper published an article that was full of lies. And what I would like you to do is I would like you to write me a new article dismissing, telling me all of the, why all of those lies were wrong. And I've picked out some of the lies, or so-called facts, that they put in their article for you to help you. But be careful because one of these is true. So let's go through the kind of thing you could write by looking at the first fact. The nucleus takes up most of the space in an atom. So let's have a think why this is false. Fact one is false because, and then you'd write why it's false. So in this case we'd write fact one is false because the nucleus does not take up most of the space in an atom. An atom is actually made up mainly of space. Now if you think that's a little bit easy and you want to stretch yourself, we've got a bit of a challenge. And on the board you will see a model of the diagram of an atom that they used in their article. And what I would like you to do is, whilst you're writing your article dismissing those lies, I also want you to dismiss this extra lie. What is wrong with this model of the atom? If you can't see it very clearly, if you type into Google, plum pudding model, you'll be able to see it a bit more closely. But what is wrong with that atom and um, what should it actually look like? You may wish to pause the video just for a few seconds or a few minutes to have a go at this before I run through the answers of which are true and which are false and why. Okay then, so we've already gone through the first one. We know that one's false because actually the nucleus takes up only a tiny space. The second one, the nucleus only contains neutrons. We know that it doesn't just contain neutrons, it also contains what? Protons. Okay, there are two subatomic particles, there are not two subatomic particles. How many subatomic particles are there? There are three subatomic particles. If you can name them, that would be even better. We have our neutrons, our protons, and our electrons. The next, atoms are only found in non-living creatures. This is false. Atoms are found everywhere inside me, inside your cats, your dogs, your guinea pigs, your fish, absolutely everything, living or non-living. Okay, and finally, electrons are found in shells. That is our true fact. I just want to take this time to say thank you very much for going through this lesson with me and we look forward to seeing you from all the science department. We look forward to seeing you in September. Thank you. Bye.